Hey there, my friends. It's time for, I don't even have a name for it, this segment. Maybe questions and answers with Spencer Hughes. I don't know what to call it. But it's a Q&A segment that I want to start doing. And I appreciate those of you who ask questions. I posted today on Facebook um, one of those Q&A sessions. And many of you, more than ever before, asked me a question. And I will address the serious ones. There are some comical ones in there as well. But I'll address the serious ones. The comical ones, I'll give a laugh emoji to and you'll know that I got the joke but I'm not going to necessarily respond to them the serious ones I'll give a response to on a video and each one will get its own video this is from Patty Burnett who asked who was uh, my biggest inspiration to pursue a radio career and it was uh, several people I would say probably primarily a man by the name of Jim Eason who thankfully is still alive and um, he spent a lifetime on the radio and was one of my biggest inspirations, along with a man named Lee Rogers. Uh, Lee uh, followed Jim. Jim was probably the first inspiration, but kind of a contemporary of his was Lee Rogers, and he was the evening host. Uh, Jim Eason was the afternoon host on KGO, the biggest radio station probably in the country, um, and certainly the highest rated for the amount of years in a row that it was highly rated. I don't know that any other talk radio station, news talk station technically, had that track record of ratings. It was number one in the books for decades. And it finally got knocked off the number one spot because it was bought by a bunch of idiots who had no idea what they were doing. And uh, this an example of a station that was bought by people that didn't know radio, didn't understand radio, were only looking at the almighty dollar. And um, KGO ended up firing everybody on the staff. The 99% uh, of the staff were fired. Collectively, probably like 200 years of radio experience fired in a matter of minutes. And it was done very abruptly, very unkindly, very brutally. And uh, they never recovered since then. And people will argue that they have recovered. They haven't. They have not recovered from those days. And it's sad that they got rid of uh, their top tier talent. It would be like, uh, I don't know, the 49ers or the Patriots or whatever team you want to put in there. Uh, letting go of all the players that made the money, all the players that are selling the most expensive jerseys, all the players that everyone comes to watch, firing them and then just hiring a bunch of college kids who have no experience playing football. It would be like hiring people to play for the 49ers or for the Patriots or for the Dolphins or whatever team is your team that were uh, college players in, um, oh, I don't know, in basketball or gymnastics or something. I mean, it has nothing to do with football. And that's what they ended up doing. And it was a disaster. But Jim Eason, uh, what inspired me, I was, I was a kid. I was a kid. I was a about 11 years old is the age I always give, right around 11, when I decided that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And it was because Jim Eason's voice would sneak into my room and sneak into the family car and sneak into the kitchen. And I loved the idea, Patty, of a voice being able to just come across the radio. And I don't, I, I've fallen in love with radio DJs, but funny enough, I didn't pursue music radio. I never pursued music radio. I've never been a DJ um, ever, even though I grew up with Dr. Donald E. Rose and Don Blue and all these great DJs on San Francisco radio. And they inspired the heck out of me, but I never wanted to spin records. I wanted to be a talk show host. And what I liked about it was that it was different than music because there were a lot of DJs, a lot of music stations, but the idea that a voice could come across your radio and just talk with you and kind of be soothing. I found Jim Eason's voice very soothing. He was always to the right of center, but not in a confrontational way, certainly not in a raise your voice kind of a way. He was always very calm and tempered, and he would decimate callers who couldn't prove their point and were calling to pick a fight with him. But he never did it in a cruel way. He never did. He always did it with love in his heart and with levity and with humor, uh, was never a yeller, was never a screamer. And I love that about him. But I love the idea of a voice, Patty, coming across your radio and just kind of talking with you and keeping you company. And whenever there was a, a, a an earthquake, he would come on, we'd turn on Jim Eason, and he would walk us through it and tell us what kind of a, a seismic reading it was and damage reports. And it was just very soothing to be able to turn on the radio and hear this voice that you befriended and that befriended you 
on talk radio. And I said to myself, that's the kind of radio I want to do. I want to talk with people. I want to reach out and affect people's lives in a positive way somehow. I never dreamed at that point it would be political talk radio. That's just sort of the way it, it came about. And uh, with my debut on KSFO, which had just turned to an all-conservative format, and that's how that began. Um, I knew I wanted to do talk radio. Um, I didn't think it would be as divisive as it ended up being. I didn't think it would end up burning me out, which it did. And I didn't think I would ever leave it. Uh, and I haven't left radio, but I do news radio now more, and I do my positivity podcast, but I just won't ever return to the combative confrontational rush limbaugh style us versus them radio model god rest his soul rush his soul i'm not bad mouthing him in death um but i didn't like the name calling i didn't like the labeling and i was guilty of that i was doing that every day on the radio and it just wore on me it wore on my family it wore on my wife it wore on my my conscience on my soul and it made me not so nice of a person anymore and I realized that all this arguing, arguing got me nowhere. It got me heartache, it got me stress, and it got me all riled up. I came home grouchy, I kept being combative even at home, and it still didn't solve the world's problems. No matter how much I opined about it on the air and thumped my chest that I was right and everyone else was wrong, didn't change anything. And it still doesn't. Politics is poison. So I will never return to political talk radio ever again. You can mark my words on that, I will never return to it. So I'm happy doing what I'm doing now, but that uh, he was probably one of the biggest inspirations. So Jim Eason, Lee Rogers, Bill Wattenberg, who was labeled the um, smartest man alive, and he hosted a show 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. on KGO on the weekends. So Friday night, Saturday night, and it was the most compelling radio I'd ever heard, really. He has several, he had, he passed away recently in the last couple of years, the last few years, sadly. But he had several PhDs from Berkeley and maybe Stanford too. I mean, he was a, he was a scholarly man. And he, um, they build him as the smartest man in the world. I gotta move here, sorry. I gotta move, I was parked, but now I gotta move. So I'm gonna end this video here because I don't wanna, I'm in a parking lot, so I'm not in any danger by moving here. So relax. Anyway, um, they build him as the smartest man alive because he would field calls from people on a show for three hours. And it could be one after, and I used to screen for him. I used to produce for him. And I actually was given his time slot after that bloodletting at KGO and they fired everybody, including Dr. Bill Wattenberg. They offered me that time slot. And there was a conflict with Fox where I did it for a couple of weekends, but then they found out about it or I volunteered the information that I was doing. They said it was a conflict of interest. I had to choose which one to do. So I chose the full-time Fox job, of course, that I had at Fox Across America versus a weekend job on KGO. And they would have fired me anyway because they had more bloodletting. They got rid of that time slot altogether, pretty much. So my days would have been numbered even if I had accepted it. But he would take calls about, uh, like, little kids asking for help with homework, like they would call and say, Dr. Bill, how far, you know, if you had to stack tortilla chips or tortillas from here to the moon, how many tortillas would it be? And Dr. Bill would give them an answer. And sure enough, it would be the exact answer. Or they'd say, how do I find the square root of this? Or how do you know that when the sun comes through the shades at this angle, that this means this or the other? And how do you know when a porcupine crosses the road and tumbles around three times backwards? What does that mean, Dr. Bill? And he would have all these answers to things. How electricity worked, how gravity worked. And it wasn't just kids that asked him questions, it was adults as well. People like me with curious minds who question things all the time. Like, what is deja vu, Dr. Bill? And he would answer it. Or, you know, do you think we'll ever colonize other planets, Dr. Bill? And he would answer with his opinions and his theories. And he was a scientist, it was always scientifically based. So those were the voices um, that inspired me. And, and, and Dr. Donald E. Rose, as I mentioned, and Don Blue inspired me on the humor end, that radio could be humorous, along with Jim Eason, who was very, very funny. So those guys could make a point and be funny and be light at the same time. And that's when I started really, really realizing I could incorporate humor in with the talk radio I was doing. There you have it, Patty. I'm sorry it was a 10 minute answer, but there's the answer to your question. And thanks a lot for asking it. Patty Burnett asked that question. And Patty, thank you very much for being a longtime listener and supporter. I appreciate it very, very much. If you have a question for me, I'll have these Q&A sessions on Facebook that'll turn into videos for, you know, people who have questions, whether it's philosophical questions or things like that, or paranormal questions, whatever question you might have. As long as it's not political, confrontational, you're trying to antagonize me because I'm not going to bite. I'm not doing that. But any other type of question, 
from my favorite type of food or dish or a place that I've been to on earth, you know, things like that, human interest stuff. Feel free when I have those sessions to ask and I may just turn it into a video like this and I'll tag you in it so you see that I responded. Thank you, my friends, and thank you, Patty.